Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about uh, help my sim models under identified. Uh, one of the things I, questions I get oftentimes with people who are looking for help is this idea is like hey my model keeps saying I'm under identified I don't understand why. Um, so today we're going to talk about how models get under identified and three probably the primary reasons why you're getting uh, an under un, under identified error message uh, as well. So uh, what does even identification mean from a SIN model? Well really it, in a simple standpoint is there enough information to identify a solution is really uh, what it is. If it's saying that you're under identified it in essence means that there are more parameters to be estimated than there are elements of the covariance matrix and so it cannot come up with a unique solvable solution then and it'll bomb out and say well I can't run it then if I can't come up with a, a unique solution. To give an example of this so let's say that I ask you to solve this equation that's like x plus y equals 10. Well it, it's unsolvable. There's too many unknowns uh, that are out there. x could be 7 and 3, it could be 8 and 2, it could be 6 and 4 you know and so I can't come up with a unique solution. It's an essence uh, from a from a sim model perspective. It's under identified then. But if I say it's uh, x plus y equals ten, but also that two x plus y equals sixteen, then at that point I have enough information to actually solve that for x and y. I know by looking at both x and y equals ten and two x plus y equals sixteen that now x will equal 6 and y equals 4 and so it's it's solvable I've got enough information uh, to solve the equation well what are the the fixes then if you will if I come up with my sim model that says I'm under identified I see three primary ways where I see models that are under identified um, one of them it has to do more conceptually uh, and the other two have to do with more uh, kind of technical aspects of running sim models really. The first one is is you just have to reduce the number of parameters being estimated. Uh, and this can be done by reducing the number of relationships that you put into your model, even covariance matrix. In essence, you've got too many parameters to be estimated in there based on uh, how many degrees of freedom there are. Uh, so let's kind of jump into Amos and I'll kind of show you um, what that kind of looks like then. So this is a, uh, a simple sim model uh, here. Uh, you can see on the I've put in the front of each one of these um, constructs the word comp which stands for composite variable. Uh, so they were measured by three or four items each and they were all kind of averaged together for a composite variable. Where you're going to see under identified models more likely than anywhere else is in path modeling which means this is not a full structural model It usually means where you're seeing composite variables that are used. This model that you're seeing right here um, is what we would call uh, from an unflattering perspective a big toe model um, and what that means uh, is toe as in it's a theory of everything it means everything's influencing everything uh, in here these are usually not really great models either if you see something like this it's usually a negative because it's not discriminatory it's just saying well every construct influences everyone else uh, and you'll see these kind of models that are out there um, where you know you've got all these kind of relationships rolling at it all at once uh, and so if you say well this came from an actual retailing uh, perspective that the uh, servers adaptive behavior will lead to uh, my perceptions of delight and that'll lead to positive word of mouth and it could also even lead to tolerance to failures which means I'm I'm gonna be much more tolerant if there's a failure that happens and the service scape is more of like you know what was kind of the built environment around the service was it really nice or poor and did that contribute to my delight and will it contribute to these DVs at the end well right now we're saying pretty much everything influences the DVs and everything's influencing delight it's not really discriminatory but if we run this even model at this point you can see down here 
um, in our analysis, we have a degrees of freedom of zero at this point. So we're not under identified. It'll still run, um, but it's uh, what they call kind of a just identified model, which means I have zero degrees of freedom. These models, for the most part, um, uh, are not what we would call even valid model models because even from a model fit perspective it doesn't assess model fit because you've constrained the model so much where there's literally no degrees of freedom it can't even assess model fit so in this event that you had said well I think word of mouth is going to influence tolerance to failure but I also think maybe there's even a reciprocal uh, relationship there where tolerance of failure is actually going to even influence word of mouth there too so if we run this analysis now you can see it didn't even run it's just giving this writing output um, what it means which means there's a problem so let's look at even in the output and see what it gives us it says this model is under identified in order to achieve identifiability it'll probably be necessary to impose at least one additional constraint one of the nice things about using the Amos program too uh, is it will oftentimes tell you where you're under identified. This says in your error variances in E2 and E3, you've got un under identification that takes place. In other sim programs, they'll just say it's under identified. Good luck finding it. And sometimes that can be really frustrating in very large models. Um, but with um, with Amos, it will tell you like, hey, here's a problem. It's right here. It's in E2 and E3. So if we look at between E2 and E3 over here, our ultimate TVs, it's saying hey you've got under identification right there you're, you're literally going to have to, to delete one of these parameter estimates uh, at, the, at the very least and so one of the ways that you're going to see uh, how to fix under identification is literally you're just got you're gonna have to take uh, some of the paths away or you're gonna have to take some of the correlations away uh, you never really want to take the correlation away between your independents. That's kind of a given in running the analysis. Uh, but if you've got other correlations in your model, uh, they may have to actually uh, be removed for you to actually run the, run the model. The uh, second quote-unquote fix uh, is to, um, to address if you've deleted an indicator. Uh, that is, quote, setting the metric. So with each uh, uh, unobservable variable, you will have observables that have captured this latent uh, construct, if you will. And more times than not, those observables, that latent construct has a reflective relationship to those uh, observables. Uh, that are out there. One of those observable relationships need to be constrained to one. It's called setting the metric. It in essence tells the software program like what's the range here. Um, and so you will set it to to, uh, to one. But sometimes what you'll see is you may be going back and deleting things and then you, you don't even realize but you actually deleted one of the indicators that was setting the metric. If you do that it's going to say that your model is under identified. So let's take a quick look at that too. So this model that I have here is uh, the exact same uh, model as I had before except now it's a full structural model. So instead of having composite variables, I have listed all of the latents and the uh, uh, observables included in the model itself. Except now we only have uh, some of the relationships between the constructs. It's a little bit more discriminatory. Uh, so now our two IVs are only going to delight and delight only goes to our two DBs. But let's say if we had this very first construct of adaptive behavior right here and you can see in this very first one of adapt one it's constrained to one. It is setting the metric. Well what if we run our analysis uh, maybe in our measurement model or in this full structural model and we say you know what this adapt one is just a really problematic item it doesn't capture the latent construct very well we just need to kind of we need to drop that um, drop that uh, observable so if I get rid of it uh, and then I run my model again now you can see I don't have any of these uh, loadings that are actually constrained to one. I, I'm not setting the metric with any of those. 
So if I run that analysis, um, you're going to see at the bottom here again, it's going to say writing output, which means, well, you got a problem. There's an error there. Um, and even if we go into the actual results, it's going to come back and say, hey, your model is underidentified. Well, where? What happened? You know, if I go into estimates, it'll tell me like, hey, adaptive behavior, there's problems in there. Look, it says that you're underidentified. And so sometimes I'll have a lot of students who'll be like, well, I don't get it. I have plenty of degrees of freedom in this model. Like there's so many. Why am I underidentified? Well, it's because you've deleted one of your indicators that was setting the metric. Even if I just simply go back into, uh, you know, one of these, the next one, that adapt to, and I constrain it to be one, um, and then run the analysis again, look, everything runs now. Uh, I've got degrees of freedom. I've got 114 degrees of freedom for the chi-square values are in. So in essence, fix two is check to see if you've deleted one of your observables that was setting the metric because that will also uh, lead you to under identification. The third fix uh, that you're going to see sometimes is you may have uh, deleted an observable and it wasn't setting the metric um, but you failed to delete the error term that was with that observable. And so what happens is you just simply have an error term floating out in the model all by itself. It's not attached to anything. And if you do that, uh, oftentimes what you'll see is uh, the, the model will say, I, I don't know how to solve for this. <laughs> you know, this error term that's out there. Uh, and it'll say it's under identified then. So if we go back to our example uh, that we were just using, and we can see now with the, uh, the adaptive behavior, I've set the metric to one. All right, but let's say adapt five up here. Uh, it's just no good. We got to get rid of that one too. And so if I get rid of adapt five, but then I left its error term out here. I didn't delete it. You know, maybe uh, I didn't realize it. Maybe this is a really huge model, and I didn't even realize that I had not deleted the error term. Uh, and then I run my model again. See, it's going to come down here and say at the bottom, writing output, which means there's an error. There's something wrong. Um, and if I go into the actual uh, results itself, uh, oh, I'm under identified. So if I go back into my estimates, well, now it's saying, hey, E11 is problematic. It's under identified. So if I go back, oh, look, E11 is all out here by itself. Like it's not even attached to anything. Uh, that's why I'm under identified then. So if I delete that and then run my model, look, everything runs again and it's fine. Um, so those are some of the problematic um, areas that you're going to see uh, with under identification in a sim model. One is you've got way too many parameters uh, that you're trying to estimate. So you're going to have to pull back on some of the proposed relationships or covariances that you're including. One, you've deleted a, an observable that was setting the metric. Uh, or you've deleted an observable, but you also failed to delete the error term that was with it, and you left it out there, and it's also unobservable too. So if you're wanting uh, more information on SIM and identification and all of those things that kind of help you run your model, I encourage you to check out my book, uh, Applied Structure Equation Modeling Using Amos. Uh, and as always, if you saw value in the videos, I'd ask that you like and subscribe for more videos to come. I hope you'll have a great week. Good people.